Hi, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to this uh, video series on real-time music and sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be talking about ring modulation. Uh, this is the first of a number of videos which will focus on um, modulation uh, effects, modulation synthesis. In all of these cases, we're going to be looking at how one um, oscillator can affect um, another one to varying degrees. Usually it's to do with either the frequency or the amplitude, which are the two major components um, of an oscillator, and they'll have various effects on those oscillators. Ring modulation is one of the most straightforward of those, which is why we're starting with it. If you uh, know anything about additive synthesis, you'll know that we can sum oscillators together in order to create more complex waves. Um, in a sense, instead of adding the oscillators together in ring modulation, we're going to multiply them together. This diagram shows two different ways in which we can understand um, ring modulation. On the left hand side, we can see that we've got um, a carrier oscillator at the bottom, that's the oscillator we're going to be listening to, and its amplitude is uh, controlled by the output of a modulating oscillator. Um, and the frequency of the carrier and the modulator can be set, um, in a sense, um, arbitrarily. This is shown again in a slightly different um, orientation. We've got a carrier and a modulator, and the outputs of each are multiplied together. Um, these are ostensibly the same thing, and one or the other hopefully will make maybe a bit more sense to you. Um, this one on the right with the multiply is most like what we implement in pure data. So let's uh, do that now. So we're going to start with um, an oscillator, and um, we'll put a number box there so we can indicate what the frequency for this oscillator should be. And we might even create um, a slider to make the adjustment of that um, frequency a little easier. Going to the properties of this um, slider, um, give it a label, it's going to be the frequency, um, a range, maybe from 50 hertz up to um, maybe 1500, we don't need to go too high and I might make it a little bit shorter just so we've got a bit more space on the screen and give it a color so it looks a bit more interesting. So that's our frequency. This slider now will be able to control a little bit more easily what the frequency is. We um, need to have a multiply object and we're going to connect this oscillator to that multiply object and then the multiply object is going to be connected that's kind of to the DAC. So that's um, one side of our um, ring modulation algorithm. We need to duplicate the oscillator a second time and those two oscillators are multiplied together. You can immediately um, hear the output there. What I might do is give myself a volume control. Uh, do that by inserting another um, multiply object in there. And then make sure I have a way of controlling that volume. Change the properties of that from 0 to 1 just to keep everything within range. So we're hearing this um, frequency. This, at the moment this is at 0 hertz which is having almost no effect, certainly nothing that we can hear. If I move this second frequency up into the audio range, we can hear that as the two oscillators interact, we get a change in the timbre. Now, oscilloscope over here, let's see if I can make that a little bit more stable by moving the trigger level. We can see perhaps a little more clearly what the shape looks like and maybe how it changes as we get different ratios between the two frequencies. The other thing to notice is um, 
on our spectrum analyzer where we're getting two peaks as you might imagine from two oscillators but we're not actually getting these two frequencies we're getting um, the one of the frequencies and then a kind of a difference a frequency at the difference between these two so the basic effect of um, this ring modulator is to um, provide us with some different frequency components um, and that's in a sense how it can become sort of a synthesis method we can continue this process we'll take it one more step further maybe with a third oscillator um, so I can multiply the output of those two oscillators with a third oscillator I'm going to move that across so the third oscillator is going to go in there give it a frequency so we're now getting an even more complex um, waveform you can see that there's additional harmonics coming up here um, so I can stabilize that waveform a little bit more So this is a way for us to get quite a, quite a complex um, waveform and at the moment we're using simply uh, sine waves as our oscillators which is very very simple but you can imagine that if we get a more complex um, wave instead of uh, this then all of these extra harmonics are multiplied if we've got a source sound which has a lot more complexity so let's maybe give that a go I'm going to get rid of the third oscillator for a minute just so it doesn't get too confusing so we'll go back to our two oscillator version and I'm going to replace this first oscillator with a more complex um, input and for that I'm going to use my microphone so from the analog to digital conversion um, what I know I'm going to have to do is to increase the volume of that so I'm going to create an amplifier to do that immediately another multiply object um, okay so as I increase the volume of my amplifier turn that up as well so we can hear it um, we can hear perhaps that it's um, maybe even a little bit further than that. Two, one, two. One, two. Okay, so you can see now on the oscilloscope that my voice is coming in. It's being affected um, by the frequency of the other modulating oscillator. I can change that frequency and get different effects on my voice as we play. That's at 500 hertz. And we can hear that there are all sorts of different sounds that can happen at the different frequencies. And you can imagine that if we um, if we added that third oscillator again um, to modulate it even further that the voice would become even more distorted. Um, in interesting ways but I will leave that um, up to you to do as an exercise. I'll see you in the next video.